Hi, I'm Dominic and this is Shannon and Hi. we're from ClickBank and we want to show you how to use the master account system. So first things first, you need to create a master account. Uh, we'll include the link at the bottom of the page, but where you come to is sign up right here. It'll ask you to fill in your email address, security questions, standard stuff. And then this will be your ClickBank account name, the nickname that's associated with your main ClickBank account, as well as the password for that account. Um, once you click sign up, it'll send you to a, a blank page that says check your email. In your email, within a few minutes, will be a link that allows you to confirm the account and it will automatically log you in. Now, once you've created the account, this is what the inside of it will look like. It'll default to the dashboard and any associated accounts will appear here. First things first, you probably have multiple accounts if you're using master. So what you're going to want to do is add your ClickBank accounts into the master system. Every ClickBank account associated with the master account will appear here. And in order to add them, click on add ClickBank account. And again, it's just the nickname and password. Same thing has happened before. It'll send you an email asking you to confirm that password or to confirm that you want to add it to that master account just to make sure that accounts get, can't get associated to the wrong master account. And once, uh, once you click confirm, it will then appear in your dashboard. So just to clarify on what Dom said, the, the email will be sent to the account, the, the email that's listed in the ClickBank account, not necessarily what you put in as your master account email. So, uh, if you have staff that's working with you that handles your um, customer support, what you're going to want to do is grant them permission, but you don't necessarily want them to see exactly how much money you're making all the time. So, you manage that by going to this Users button. In Users, you can add people who have access to your master account, but restrict what they can see or do. So, in this case, you will add your uh, employee's email address, so let's say customer support at gmail.com. Description is this is customer support and whatever their name is. When you hit save, it'll send an email to that person asking them to add. Uh, they're asking them to log into master and confirm that they want an account. But this is where you control what they're able to see. So in order to manage tickets or customer support requests, you can select one account or you can check this box to select all of the accounts that are in your master. Manage orders, so the ability to refund orders, um, as well as subscription management, which we'll be discussing later on. Also, there's uh, API here. This is for an API user. If you have questions about integrating the API with Master, a third-party API, contact your account manager. We'll be able to get you in touch with one of our sales engineers who can help set that up. You will always be able to manage who on your team has permissions, though. In this case, obviously, this is a blank email address, but they haven't confirmed it yet and if you ever want to go back say they change roles or they leave your company you can manage permissions here and uncheck any boxes that you don't want them to have access to in the future okay so for uh, in order to do a transaction search the easiest ways to do that is by the order number which is um, also known as receipt here on the screen or the email address so if you have a customer who contacts you um, via chat, phone, email, um, and you have either their order number or their email address, then you can search for it pretty easily here. So I'm going to go ahead and paste in a, one of our, an order number, which is eight alphanumeric digits. And then I can just hit search to populate that. So here we have this, the transaction. And then if you click on the receipt right here, it'll give you the details of it. So obviously this one was you know, purchased by Ryan, amount $105, the product that was uh, dishwashing, um, and then it'll even give you the thank you, the thank you page URL, the item, um, all the details of that purchase. And if, there are, if it's a recurring billing product, then the, all of the rebills will show up 
just below, um, just below this area here. So from this screen is where you can start to action a, um, where you can start to action an order. So let's say that Ryan has contacted your customer service team um, and he's on the phone with your agent. They would look up his order with that order number or his email address. And then if he, let's say he wants to ask for a refund, you would just go in, hit create ticket, go to refund, and then select a reason. The reason um, is from the customer's perspective. So um, let's say that he was not, it was not compatible with his computer. We can put that in. And then the comments here are visible to the customer as well. So you could type in something about, so sorry that this didn't work out for you. You know, um, we, we appreciate your business and hopefully you'll try some of our other products again. And then once you have, once you have done that, you hit save and you will, and the, an email will go out to the customer confirming that the refund has, refund ticket has been opened. And then you'll see here that uh, the refund ticket's going to close in four minutes and 58 seconds. So you just let it, you just let it be. Don't go in and, and close it. If you, if you were to go in here and hit close ticket, that will actually make it so that the refund does not occur. So just let it expire on its own and that refund will happen. And the reason for the five minute window is just in case you accidentally click on the wrong transaction and you refund the wrong person, you can go back in and save it. So you have a five minute window there just to be sure. Yeah, so I mean, if, if you did that, then you would do, you would use that close option and you would say close ticket and then you could make a comment um, explaining that there was a mistake or whatever the case may be. Okay, so for those of you that are selling subscription products, being able to manage subscriptions is a very important part of your business and being able to uh, increase the lifetime value of your customers. So what we're looking at here is I've searched for transactions based on, this is my test account, uh, my vendor test account. When you search uh, for the entire account, it'll search for all the transactions associated with the date range. Now you can't just type in the vendor name, you have to actually include a start and end date so that it doesn't return an unlimited amount of results. Um, but one thing, these are all test transactions, so normally you won't see this box here. But um, you can see that this is the receipt number, and then this S here means that it's a subscription product. So it's a recurring billing product. Oftentimes, people will call in, they either want to cancel, um, you know, it, or get a refund. Well, there's a couple things that you can do to save, save the sale and retain that customer. So on a subscription product, we have the ability to um, come in here, manage a subscription, so we can change the subscription product. So in this case, this is a fifty dollar bill, fifty dollars a month, um, and you tell the customer, "Well, uh, I understand you want to cancel. How about if we just charge you twenty five dollars a month?" So in that case, we come in here, change subscription product. I know that SKU number seven in my test account, it actually only bills them for $25 a month. So when we click on this, SKU number seven, the next bill date will be on 725. If for some reason you want to edit that billing date, um, you can select that here. Once you hit save, that, cu that customer will be billed for SKU number seven instead of SKU number three going forward. The other thing that you can do is change the subscription bill date. In this case, oftentimes vendors will have somebody that calls and wants to cancel and typically the line is, well, we, we, we think our product's really valuable. How about you give it another month to test out? We'll, we'll give you a month on us. Um, so how about a month free? Instead of billing you again on the August 26th, we'll bill you again on September 26th instead. So we'll skip that month. Um, also, uh, to extend a subscription, some subscriptions are set up to be billed for a limited amount of time. In this case, this one will bill essentially unlimited for 999 months. When you set up the product in your ClickBank account, though some products are set up where the vendor decides they only wanna bill for six months, whatever it may be, some software tool or something. If your customer calls you and says that they wanna to continue to have access to that tool, um, you can extend the rebuild period. So if this were 10 months, 
I can add additional rebuild periods here. Once I hit save, it'll include that in the, in the, uh, in the subscription term. Finally, and this is one of the most powerful features of, of uh, the subscription management system, is to be able to reinstate a canceled subscription. So uh, let's say somebody calls, they're very insistent about canceling, but you're pretty sure that you have a good product and you want to remarket to your cancels. Uh, you send out an email, customer responds and says, you know what, I actually did like your product. You can come in here, click reinstate canceled subscription and hit save without ha the customer having to enter their billing information again, that subscription starts again. Um, we obviously want to be really careful, make sure that you have the permission of the, of the user to do this, but it's a really simple way to increase your LTV for your customers. So the last thing we want to show you today is how to work at the ticket system. So uh, if you have agents who are going through all of your ClickBank accounts and just working all of the open tickets, then what they'll want to do is go to this ticket screen. And let's say they're interested in um, saving, saving sales. So anybody who has um, contacted ClickBank or opened a refund ticket, you can find them by, go, by opening refund and then hit find tickets. So here we have one, Mr. Peyton Manning wants to have a, <laughs> wants to have a refund. So I can click on that ticket number, it'll open it up and oh gosh, um, Mr. Manning thought that we were coming to wash his windows. Boy, was he wrong. Um, but what you can do is if you leave it alone and don't do anything, the refund will be, will be issued once, uh, once it's expired. So you know, up here we have information about when it was opened and the expiration is in two days and 22 hours. That's because it's Friday today. So typically these expire 24 hours after they're opened. Um, given that it's Friday, we give you the over the weekend, um, assuming that you don't have anybody working over the weekend. So uh, it'll expire on Monday. So what we can do here for Mr. Manning is a couple different things. If we want to let him just refund, um, then we can just leave it alone. If instead we want to um, try and save the sale, we can change it to technical support and reply back and say, um, hey, Mr. Manning, um, so sorry about the confusion. I want to make it up to you. Let, let, let me give you a, a bonus offer and explain how, how the product really works. Um, if he responds back and is okay with that, that's great. The technical support ticket will just expire. It can be open, that's fine. Um, if instead he writes back and says, oh no, I really want my refund, then you can change it back. There'll be an option on here to change it back to a refund. Uh, also, if, you know, if he opens a refund ticket and it's a subscription product, um, sometimes there's a confusion between the terms of refund and cancellation. So if he's just looking to cancel the subscription so he doesn't have uh, future billings, but he's opened a refund ticket, you can change it to just be a cancel. That way you're not gonna refund any money back, he just won't get billed for the future. So you could um, change it to cancel, write a little comment, hit save, and that'll go to Mr. Manning and he'll, um, and, and he'll find out that, okay, we're, we're canceling your subscription, um, but he won't get any money back. Then lastly, if you've already contacted this client and um, smooth things over and they don't really want a refund, then you can just hit close ticket and put a comment here about um, you know, what, what has occurred just so that, so that we have um, some visibility on my side that this customer has always already been contacted via email and uh, does, does not want to refund and then hit save. So that'll, that'll help you um, to work these refund tickets. Instead, if I want to uh, do look at technical support tickets, I'll select tech support hit find tickets and let's see what we have here. So we have a customer named Warren Moon and he had opened a technical support ticket on the 25th <laughs> and he and you can see that it expires a little bit longer. Um, has, we have 48 hours uh, except for over the weekend we give you the, that time. And he says that he's unable to download the window washing product and wants, also wants to know when um, we're coming to wash his windows. So we might wanna take a look at our copy because obviously we're giving the wrong impression about our di digital product. Um, but 
we, uh, we, we definitely want to help him out um, on how to download. So you, what you would do here is just comment on the ticket and provide access to the product. Or if you're doing that in an external system, just let him know, hey, we just sent you an email with your download link and then hit save. If instead um, you want to give a refund, you know, if the person, a lot of times the person will open a technical support ticket and their, their reason will be like, I want a refund and I want my money back now, then go ahead and change that to refund or cancellation as the case may be and hit save. Then I think the last option we have here is cancellation tickets. So it's the same, same kind of gist. Um, one thing about, to note about cancellation tickets is a lot of times people will, will open cancel thinking that they're going to get their money back. So the cancellation ticket will say something about, hey, give me my money back right now. This wasn't what I expected. Then in that case, you'll want to change it to a refund in order to, to uh, issue the, the refund to them. And that's how you use Masters. Um, please feel free to let us know if you have any questions. You can reach out to either your account manager or you can reach out to support at clickbank.com. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.